Hello, everybody. In this video lecture, we will cover arrows during meiosis. So this is the PowerPoint that I will use. Let's go ahead and begin. Inherited disorders can arise when chromosomes behave abnormally during meiosis. Chromosome disorders can be divided into two categories, abnormalities in chromosome number and chrom abnormalities in chromosome structure, uh, structural rearrangement. So either um, zygote ends up with wrong number of chromosomes or chromosomes arrangement is not correct. Because even small segments of chromosome can span many genes, chromosomal disorders are characteristically dramatic and often fatal. Disorder in chromosome number, right? This is our um, first category of chromosome disorder, chromosome number. It caused by non-disjunction, which occurs when pair of homologous chromosomes or sister chromatids fail to separate during meiosis. The risk of non-disjunction increases with the age of the parents. Um, so over here, you see non-disjunction in meiosis one and meiosis two. Um, so if, if you didn't watch video about meiosis yet, um, then it would be good to go back and watch this video first. Otherwise, it would be difficult to understand what's going on over here. But meiosis is a type of cell division um, that forms gametes. Gametes are eggs and sperms. Um, during meiosis, in meiosis one, in a metaphase one, um, homologous chromosomes, pair of homologous chromosomes line up in the middle of a cell. Um, this pair is called tetrads. And what need to be separated, homologous chromosomes. So you see the smaller chromosomes, they are separated, but this a pair of homologous chromosomes did not separate. When this happened, one cell uh, missing chromosomes and another cell has extra chromosomes. Now through meiosis two, we have second division and here's the gametes that are formed and gametes are abnormal. Some gametes will have uh, N minus one number of chromosome. So for human, it, it will be 22, right? Because we need 23 chromosome. Our N equals 23. So is it has 22 or 24? N plus, N plus, or N minus, N minus. So all gametes are abnormal. If non-disjunction happens in meiosis two, then in meiosis one, homologous chromosome separates fine, and what fail to separate are sister chromatids in meiosis two. Then some of the gametes can be normal, N and N, and some still can be abnormal, N plus one and N minus one. And again, for human, N plus one is 24, and min N minus one is uh, 22, and N is 23. Um, now, which of these, let's imagine those are all sperms, which one will fertilize an egg? It may be normal, right? Normal sperm can fertilize it, so nothing would happen. Or, this might be a normal egg and those become polar bodies, right? But the chances are that abnormal sperm or abnormal egg will be formed, will be fertilized, and there are a chance that embryo will survive. Then the person will have genetic disorder. If non-junction occurs and a normal sperm fertilizes an egg with an extra chromosome, the result is a zygote which, with a total of 2n plus 1 chromosome. If the organism survives, it will have abnormal karyotype and probably a syndrome or disorder caused by the abnormal number of genes. So here's an example when we have a normal sperm, right? n is normal. 
And here's abnormal egg with one extra chromosome. Because look at this red chromosome. It still has homologous chromosomes that should not be inside an egg. So this is N plus two. Now, when they fuse, um, so we have one normal pair, one normal pair, red and blue, red and blue, and one extra chromosome. So the um, ploidy is 2N plus 1. Um, is it possible that uh, sperm is abnormal? That's possible too. It just more often a problem happen with an egg. And just because we have like million of sperms, and if some of them are abnormal, you know, chances are still very high that a normal sperm fertilizer an egg. And females only produce, you know, one or two eggs every month. So here's the chances, of course, higher um, that abnormal sperm is uh, formed, right? And it has other things to do, um, how the sperm and egg is formed. So usually problem with an egg. So is it possible that normal sperm fertilize eggs at N minus one? Yes, that's possible as well, right? Then it will be two N minus one um, ploidy of, of the zygote. So here's some examples. Very well-known Down syndrome. Down syndrome called trisomy 21. That means that there is three chromosomes 21. It should be two. It should be uh, two chromosomes one, two chromosomes two, two chromosomes three, two chromosomes 21. If you have trisomy, one chromosome 21 is extra. Um, it, Down syndrome is a condition in which individual has an extra chromosome 21 and its effect about one out of every 700 children. So that's very high uh, number. So that's karyotype of this baby. And if you look here, first we know it's a female because we have two X chromosomes. And here's chromosome 21 and one, two, three, right? So that baby has Down syndrome. The incidence of Down syndrome in the offspring of normal parents increases markedly with the age of the mother. Uh, so if you see if a mother is 20 years old, 25, 30, uh, the chances of having an uh, infant with Down syndrome is very low. And uh, when the mother is over 40, especially over 45, right, the chances increases. However, it's still not that horrible as this graph shows because it's per 1,000 births. So um, 80 per 1,000, it's only, uh, what? It's only uh, 8%, right? So 8% chance. And 45, it's only 3% chance. But it's better than, oh, I mean, it's worse, sorry. It's worse than 0%, right? With age of mother, the incidence of Down syndrome increases. This is another example, and those are abnormal number of sex chromosomes. Um, oh, before we go over here, um, so, Trisomy 21, do we have any other trisomies? Yes, we do. We have trisomy 18, trisomy 13. It's just Down syndrome is the most common trisomy and actually embryo survives. Like it's result in a live birth. Lots of other trisomies um, cause miscarriage and, you know, baby is never born. Right, so, but we do have other trisomies as well. So this is abnormal number of sex chromosomes. Um, and abnormal number of sex chromosomes seems to upset the genetic balance less than unusual number of autosomes. Perhaps because Y chromosome is very small and carries relatively few genes. So example is over here is Turner syndrome. Oh, I'm sorry, it's not Turner. Let me fix it very quickly. Uh, this needs to be R. Um, so if it's not fixed in your PowerPoint, um, so just make sure it's not Turner, it's a Turner. So this uh, R is missing. Sorry for that. 
Um, so this is a Turner syndrome, and it's a girl with only one X chromosome. So its abbreviation is X0. And Klein-Filter syndrome is this boy over here. And if you look at his sex chromosome, he has two X chromosomes, as a female would supposed to have, and one Y chromosome. So it's extra chromosome. So it's XXY. However, it's still a, a male, and he would have external genitalia of male and internal um, male reproductive organs, but it, it would have the syndrome and some abnormalities. Some of them are not ability to have kids, right? But, um, well, Klinefelter syndrome seems uh, that this upsets the genetic balance more than Turner syndrome. Turner syndrome, um, those people are, you know, pretty much do not have any, any um, like real bad conditions with exceptions that they cannot have kids, right? But they can have completely normal life. Um, Klinefelter syndrome affects uh, health way more than Turner syndrome. Um, another type of uh, genetic uh, disorders would be because of the structural rearrangement of chromosomes. Cytologists have characterized numerous structural rearrangement in chromosome, including partial duplication, deletion, inversion, translocation. I'll show you some example and it will make a sense. Duplications and deletions often produce offspring that survive but exhibit physical and mental abnormalities. So here's one example of uh, chromosomal rearrangement. It's called cry du chat syndrome. It comes from French cry of the cat. It's a syndrome associated with nervous system abnormalities and identifiable physical features that result from a deletion of um, most of the small arm on chromosome five. So all these kids over here, what happened? Their chromosome number five just lost a little piece of it. The small arm is lost. This is really a tragedy, right? And uh, I hope sooner in the future we will be able to fix um, this problem because can you imagine if if you can just kind of like add a normal chromosome 5 in the zygote these kids would have completely different lives they would be absolutely normal people you know uh, it's sad when we know what causes disease so we have enough knowledge to know what the problem is, but we didn't figure out yet how to fix it. That would be amazing if we could do it, and I'm sure we will, uh, but maybe not as soon as we want to. Um, but here's the Cridu Chat syndrome. So here's this female, and if you look at chromosome number five over here, they supposed to be homologous, so they supposed to be the same length and carries the same gene, but this little piece is missing. This tiny little piece of one chromosome missing, and it has such huge impact on a person' physical, mental uh, abilities, and you know quality of life and home. So that's Cridu Chat syndrome, and this is deletion on chromosome five. Translocation. Uh, translocation is movement of chromosomal segment to new location. So this is another um, another rearrangement, another rearrangement. Like we had deletion, now we have translocation. Um, example would be familiar Down syndrome because some Down syndrome runs in the family. And um, here it shows us a translocation. So here's one chromosome and another, and they just like switch fragments over here. Uh, so all genes are still there, but because they are in the wrong place, that's also affect uh, human, you know, um, life. 
and health. Uh, some specific trans translocation have been associated with several cancers and with schizophrenia. Um, so here we have familiar Down syndrome. And in this situation, so here's normal chromosome 21 and chromosome 14, right? And of course, we always have pairs. Uh, so when this person form uh, egg, it has one chromosome 21, one chromosome 14. But if we have this translocation, for example, so that parent still has kind of like everything, chromosome 14, chromosome 21, but one chromosome 21 is attached to chromosome 14, right? That's translocation. Or maybe piece of it attached and some is lost. But now when we go through the division over here, for, through meiosis, what can happen? It can be normal, right? So that, those are gametes. That's a normal gamete, right? This one will be a carrier, right? It's, it still has 114, 121. Right, but in this example, uh, we have extra chromosome 21 because this chromosome and this uh, end up in the same egg, right? And um, the organism will grow with three chromosome 21. So it's again, it's trisomy 21, but in this situation, we have a carrier. So this person carry this condition within family. And this is lethal, so this embryo will not survive, but this can survive and again has three uh, chromosomes 21. So that was uh, translocation. Okay, let's see. Um, that's where we, yeah. So the very last slide tell us that not all structural rearrangement of chromosome produce non-viable, impaired, or infertile individuals. In rare instances, such a change can result in the evolution of new species. In fact, inversion in chromosome 4 and 18 appears to have contributed to the evolution of humans. So if you look over here, this is a chimpanzee chromosome number 4. And this is human chromosome number four. And chimpanzee is our closest relatives. And when scientists study the structure of those chromosomes, uh, they notice that uh, in human, this piece, this piece broke off and it's kind of like uh, inverted itself. So it's still there but location of gene now is different, right? So you take this piece and you, um, you rearrange it, right? You, um, you kind of like inv invert it, right? so it will be inversion. And now all genes are here, but this even different sequence of genes can affect uh, our characteristics. So that's chromosome four and a similar um, process happened with chromosome 18. So that's how we can have, you know, 98% of genes similar to chimpanzee genes, but we're still, you know, pretty different organisms. Um, anyway, this was our last uh, slide. Um, we cover arrows in meiosis. Thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.